Good morning. It is uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, February 2nd. I'm Pastor Sean, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Today we get into the book of Titus, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, into uh, chapter 2, verse 6. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife, and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced, since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish, Jewish myths and the, uh, and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be rever uh, reverent in behavior, not slanders or slaves to some, to, or bleh, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the, good, the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may be may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Many in various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. Alrighty. So a little bit more um, pastoral encouragement, uh, this time uh, to Titus uh, from Paul. And, um, you know, as, as he's saying, as an overseer, as, as a... As God's steward, as pastor, you must be above reproach, not arrogant, quick-tempered, all this stuff, but you got to be hospitable, lover of good, yada, 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 all this stuff. And um, like I said, this is for pastors, so this would, you know, certainly speaks to me, <laughs> but um, th this whole little section here um, where, you know, he says towards the end here, you know, older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, older women, likewise, reverent in behavior, not slanders, yada, yada, yada. So, um... Paul's encouragement here to this this holy living, and this is one of those things where um, you know it, it's good to reflect on this and the need for holy living, because um, we kind of hold this in 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 a kind of tension, sort of. I guess it's a kind of tension in that you know we are called to this holy living, you know, to be all these things. You know, pastors got a very high bar to um, to aim for. Um, lay people uh, are, are, you know, to be you know, sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love, steadfastness, all this stuff. And we know that we are not saved by these things. 
you know, if, if you're able to do the, that stuff in any, you know, any large amount or, or whatever at all, this does not commend you to God. This does not um, give you extra brownie points. It does not affect your salvation. Your salvation is completely, 100%, the work of Jesus Christ, and it is a gift. It is not deserved, earned, but. So, on one hand, we've got this exhortation to holy living, and on the other hand, we've got, well, but it doesn't do anything for salvation, so then why do we do it? Well, um, you know, it depends who you ask, because you could ask some people and say, well, God expects us, and so, yes, he saves us, but obedience, this is the life that we're brought into, obedience very legalistic. Um, and oftentimes that becomes obedience to keep that salvation. So God may give you salvation as a gift, but now it's up to you to keep it. That's wrong. <laughs> God himself upholds our salvation. Um, we, we certainly don't, um, you know, we, we can throw it away. We can abandon it. We can reject it. But um, our obedience does not add on to it, if I can say it that way. Um, so there's that, or, you know, it, it's our thankful, it, it's like a, our thank you to Jesus. Like he, he did all this. So we might as, this is our, our way of saying thank you, which, um, again, is, is kind of like he, he wants our faithfulness. <laughs> he wants us to turn to him and say, we need you. Um, you know, again, our, our good deeds are only pleasing to God so much as it is Jesus accomplishing these good deeds through us, that his blood covers them. So there's all that. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's certainly the, the calls to, to holy living and all these things uh, are certainly good for us. I mean, they're, they're good. Uh, what God calls us to is, is for our benefit. Um, it is not just like he wants us to prove anything to him. He says, this is, this is the way human, this is the way I created human beings. This is the life that I created for you. This is the life that was rejected in the Garden of Eden that brought in sin. So sin is always going to be against these things. But so, um, uh, striving for this kind of living is is certainly striving to be a human being. <laughs> is is really when you come down to it, divorce it from salvation because salvation is God's work. Um, we want to tr uh, uh, strive for this, aspire to this, because this is what we were created for. This is what it means to be a human being. Um, and so any departure from that is is just sin, essentially. Uh, so um, we certainly want to be human beings. But, um, you know, I kind of go back to the pastor thing. Well, why is it, you know, why is an overseer, what, why must he be above reproach? Why must he be, you know, why is this a special thing? Like overseers have to have this higher bar. You know, you must be, you know, you must above reproach, hospitable, uh, not arrogant, quick tempered. I mean, nobody should be, but I mean, he points out that overseers, pastors should be like this. Well, because our conduct, you know, <laughs> God gives us this stuff, not just for ourselves, but for other people as well. And so, you know, our conduct is a reflection on God, on, on our faith and, and, and all this. So people who see this, um, you know, if they see us delighting in sin, well, that's a reflection. And, and we're like, well, and, and I'm a Christian and I'm proud of this. Well, then that reflects upon our faith. You know, and so they, they look at that and be like, well, why should I bother? I mean, this is kind of where we, we find ourselves now where so many people are, are just not interested in Christianity whatsoever. Why, whatsoever. why? Because I would say to a large degree, Christians simply don't live as Christians. And so they look at that and they say, well, okay, I, I understand what you're, you're telling me, you know, and the, the spiritual stuff and salvation, I get that. And, but I don't see, you know, you're just doing the same stuff I am. You know, and, and the same stuff that you say is wrong, I, I see you're doing. Um, and so it, it definitely reflects um, on, on, on all of us. And so, um, you know, if, if we want to, to show that, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is something different, this is something even that, that somebody would want, we need to actually, you know, live as we were created to live. Um, and, and really, so the, the idea is for the salvation of all people, that we want people to see the goodness of God through us. Um, you know, certainly the, the word presents that in, in a way that we simply cannot, you know, it delivers Jesus Christ. But um, for them to see what that word means for us and for our lives is a huge deal. Um, and so uh, the, the beauty is we, we always come back every, every Sunday to be forgiven because we we don't do this stuff very well. Um, and that ultimately is, is the true mark of a Christian, is, is desiring to be forgiven, coming to the place to re that, that forgiveness is um, de offered and, and delivered and receiving it. But, um, 
you know, we, we do these things and just like we do everything, you know, the, the call to being a Christian is a call to sacrifice, love, sacrificing and loving and serving for the sake of the neighbor. And so this, this call to holy living is just as much for them. Um, you know, it's good for us. I mean, certainly there are so many good things about what this calls us to. And, um, you know, we, we find ourselves in a much better position if we live according to uh, God's word. But we must always remember that, you know, this is about other people, too. This is about loving them and serving them. So um, it's a good, good, uh, good thing to ponder as you get into this text today. So let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today, uh, for starting off your day with our morning prayer. Hope you have a great day, and uh, peace be with you.